Your praises are for your todays. There is a time to pray, but there is a time to praise. And you need to understand that there are times that when you are in the battle, it's not a time to pray, it's a time to praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. See, you're clapping your hands right now, and we read the Bible, it says, oh, clap your hands, all your people. Do it again one more time. <laughs> clap those hands to the Lord. Now, I want you to look at your hands as you clap those hands, because clapping your hands Signify something great in the kingdom. Oh, my goodness. You see, when the scripture introduces to us, oh, clap your hands, all your people. And then it says, shout with the voice of triumph. It's saying, give the Lord a great big hallelujah. Give him a hallelujah. Give him a glory to God. because it's trying to get you to walk in the revelation of what has been given to you. There has been something that has been given to you that you may be in a fight, but the fight is fixed for you to win. Mm. You see, they understood when the idea of praise, of clapping your hands was introduced. It was an expression that the chains had been removed from your hands. Where you were once in sin and you were bound and you couldn't move. You couldn't move those hands. But when salvation came into your life, the chains were broken from your hands. And the praise of clapping your hands is to remind you that you have freedom, that you're no longer bound. You're still in the fight, but you're not bound. There's freedom in those hands. <laughs> Clap your hands, all your people, and shout unto the Lord with the voice of triumph. You see, the shout is just as important as a clap. And some of you need to learn to get a shout. It's not just for the football game. It's not just for the basketball game. It's not just for the baseball game. Because you're shouting over a team that can't do nothing for you. You paid to go there, and you're watching them. But when you shout unto the Lord, you're shouting to someone that has done something for you. When I praise the Lord, I'm praising the Lord because of my freedom and because of the victory that I have in Christ. God's church is a shouting church. It's not a silent church. I don't like all that shouting. What were you doing when you went to the football game? Were you sitting there or were you shouting? It's a shouting church. It knows how to shout and praise the Lord. Consequently, when you're a praiser, it's hard to keep a praiser silent because a praiser wants to open up his mouth. He wants to say something. He wants to talk about the goodness of God. He wants to talk about when I think of the goodness of all he's done for me. My soul, my soul. So you need to understand that praise is a weapon that you possess. When you begin to clap your hands, you may start off and you're all like, well, I ain't really into it right now. But you start clapping those hands, you start thinking, wait a minute, he's giving me freedom, but I'm acting like bondage. When you get freed and you realize I got freedom, I don't have bondage. And then you begin to incorporate the shout. Hallelujah. Jesus is good. When you begin to start incorporating the sound 
of that great shout, something begins to rumble on the inside of you. The greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. You start waking up the lion of the tribe of Judah. Something wakes up inside of you when you learn how to shout and praise the Lord. Stop being silent when you come to church. Stop sitting there in defeat. Your victory is in your mouth. Shut that up, Oko. Woo! Because when you begin to shout, you're going to get the revelation for the Lord is high. He is awesome. He is the king of the earth. Wait a minute. I've been set free. Who set me free? The king of all the earth set me free. The king of glory. Who is the king of glory? He is high. He is lifted up. He shall subdue the people under us. Doesn't matter who's trying to be your enemy. Your praise is not because you think you're going to get the victory, but you know he's paid for the victory. See, praise is praise out of a revelation. I may not be where I want to be, but I'm not what I used to be. And I know if I can continue to praise where I am, I'm going to go where I'm supposed to be. Because every place where my feet tread upon, he's going to give me that territory. My praise keeps moving me forward. Your praise keeps moving you forward. I don't feel like it. What has feelings got to do with it? What has feelings got to do with it? It's the revelation. When I think of the goodness of all he's done for me, it's the fact that he is worthy. Thirty-eight years, the man was maimed at the pool of Bethesda. Thirty-eight years, he was maimed. There he was at the pool of Bethesda. He kept going to the same place every day, and he wouldn't miss it. He would show up at that pool of Bethesda. Why would he show up to the pool of Bethesda? Why didn't he quit? Because he had an expectation. Today may not be my day, but my day is coming, and I'm going to show up at the pool of Bethesda. The word Bethesda means the house of kindness. Guess where you're at today? You are in the house of of kindness. The pool represents the living water. And there is living water that's flowing today. And you may be here today a little maimed. And you may be a little crippled. He kept going for 38 years. He didn't stop. Did he get discouraged? Oh, yeah, he got discouraged. Don't think praisers don't get discouraged. But praisers have got a revelation that discouragement can't keep it down. You know why? Because you can't be a cynic and be a praiser. You can't be negative and be a praiser. And you can't be a praiser and be negative. Whose report shall you believe? Whose report are you going to believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord. See, a praiser, it's about the report. I'm trying to teach this thing. All that negativity, all that cynicism, all that criticism. See, you're messing yourself up. You're using your mouth for the wrong thing. You're using your mouth for the wrong thing. The crippled man there 
at that pool of Bethesda. He was there. He had a fight through all of the criticism of the people. Get him out of there. Why are you doing there? Get him out of the front. Why is he there again? He's been coming around for 38 years and nothing has happened yet. You need to stop coming. You need to stop trying to think you're going to have your breakthrough. And that's the same thing that the devil tells some of you. You keep coming to this house, you keep coming to church, and you keep coming because something inside of you is telling you, my turn is coming, my breakthrough is coming, but you've got the voices of the enemy telling you, it's not gonna come, it's not gonna happen, but I'm here to tell you that a praiser has got a revelation of the king of glory. Here's the issue. After 38 years, he couldn't get into the pool because every time he tried to get into the pool, someone would beat him. He did everything he could do, but he was maimed. And there at the pool of Bethesda, it would be a place that once a year an angel would come and he would trouble the waters. There would be a stirring that would take place. And there would be a churning that would take place. The environment would change. And the first one in would receive a miracle. 38 years he would come and the waters would be stirred up and there would be a churning and a churning till finally, guess what? The environment changed and it was conducive for a breakthrough. That's why praise is so important. Praise is the ingredients that changes any environment. It'll change any environment. Praise will change the environment. When you're feeling insecure and you've got a situation, you need to start praising God. You need to start praising God. I don't care if you're at work, say I gotta take a five minute break, leave, go to the bathroom, and get in that bathroom, start dancing, start clapping, start singing, start shouting, stir up praise. It'll change the environment inside of you. The environment was changed and there he was at the pool. And here comes Jesus one day, why? Because the guy kept showing up for 38 years. His time had finally come. After waiting 38 years, his time has finally come. He got his miracle and he was made whole. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to tell you, it is impossible for you to stay faithful to God and to consistently keep the house of God first in your life and your time never come. I'm here to prophesy to someone that your time is coming and you need to continue to be diligent. You need to continue to be fervent. And every time you get down, you need to praise. And any time you feel negative, you need to praise. Well, let me get into this here. You got me all riled up.